In our lecture, we have sent a transaction to our smart contract through the Truffle console, and we have also specified a value in the transaction, which means we are sending some ether in the transaction. We have specified 10 ether, the value in a way. We have sent the transaction, we have received it in the smart contract, it was processed in the block, so it was added in the block, therefore the changes were applied to the state, and now we have on the smart contract 10 ether. In this lecture, I would like to take a look on more details about the blocks, about the transactions, and I would like to talk, uh, I, I would like to give you some more information. So this lecture will be AI lecture, so additional information. Okay, uh, let's start and uh, let's clear out some things here. So let's take a look at the Ganache and you know that our transaction was sent to the network and the state change was applied when the block was added into, into blockchain. So you can see here, the first block when you have created a blockchain Ganache when you have initialized was added automatically, that's a Genesis block, and all of the other blocks was added after that are linked with each other. Every block is linked with, with each other. So when you will inspect here hash, uh, block hash, you can see here this hash, block hash 14, uh, 7, 41. When you will go to block one, you can find here parent hash. Actually, it doesn't say this here, but I will show you in, it, in the console that this block contains parent hash that links to the previous hash. So when you will change some block in the blockchain, all of the other blocks after that will be, inv will be invalid, basically. All right, so uh, let's take a look on the blocks in more details in our in our console. Okay, let's uh, let's stay here in a, in a development uh, in a in a console terminal, yeah, and uh, let's write here one command. We will be getting the blocks here. Okay, I wish I could make here some more, some more space for you. Oops, uh, and let's uh, let's get a block number. Okay, so let's write here web tree, eth, and uh, let's call here a function get block. And it will specify the number of the block you would like to get. Okay, so we can specify either from a zero to nine. So I'll, I will get here my last block, nine. And I will get here information about the block. So you can see here hash, parent hash, mix hash, nance, shatri uh, ankles, log blooms, transactions root, a state root, and so on. All, all these information about, uh, about the block when it was added into the blockchain. Uh, let's get the block number eight, and I will show you. And you'll compare here this uh, this parent hash here. This parent hash will be hash of the previous block of this here. Okay, so 24777. And you can see here parent hash here is a 24777. So this means that the blocks are linked to each other. So the new block points to the previous one, and this previous one here points also to the previous one. This this one here, this parent hash will be hash of the block seven. Okay. Uh, then you have a here a mix hash and the nonce. These two parameters are very important because thanks to these parameters, the block is added into, into the blockchain. So uh, you can imagine, I will maybe draw it for you. Okay, if this will be open for, it will be, it, it, if this will be open, that uh, when you are sending transactions, and actually better would be to show you something else. Let's go to browsers, let's open here a new tab, and let's search here for Ethereum network live. Ethereum network live view, maybe. This one here. How you can visualize Ethereum network. You can see these transactions are transactions in the mempool and they are added lots of transactions every second. That's a transaction to send the ether, that's a transaction to call smart contracts and so on. And you can see as soon as there, there is a miner, there is a node in a blockchain network, in a blockchain network. Uh, they will get the transactions, they will order them, and they will add a block into the blockchain, and uh, when the block is added into the blockchain, then the transaction is uh, considered to be accepted and the state is changed in the Ethereum. So here you have it, you can, you can, that's how you can visualize it. And on the Ether scan, in the Ether scan you can see the blocks that are added here, and you can see they are cont containing a transaction. Okay, and when the block is added, then, as I mentioned, the ten, then the state is applied. It's applied for uh, when you are calling the smart contract, when you are sending uh, just the ether from account to account. That applies for anything on the on the network. When you want to do changes, you need to send a transaction, and the transaction has to be added into the block, and the miner is responsible for mining these blocks. 
So you can imagine you have here different different types of miner. You can see this, this miner, this miner, this miner, this miner here, this miner, and they are competing with with, the, with each other basically. Okay. So you have this network of competing uh, miners, and the win winning miner will add the block into the blockchain. Okay. I hope this will stop loading soon, <laughs> and I will show you a diagram. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, a new empty node landscape, perfect. Okay, so okay, so you have these competing miners, right? You have Ethereum, Ethereum network and you have these com competing miners and they are competing whoever will add a new block into the blockchain. Okay, and they are, they are, they are just the nodes in the Ethereum network. They are getting a transaction from the mempool. Each of them have access to the mempool, of course. Okay, all of them have a trans it, transaction in the mempool, and they are trying to create, and they are trying to create the blocks and add it to the existing blockchain. Okay, they are they are competing against each other basically to to form this block, and to add it, to add it into the block as a new block into the blockchain. In order to add this uh, block into the blockchain, they are running algorithm. Okay, they are they are they are they are getting their uh, transactions in, into the block so they are they are ordering the transactions they are running them through the algorithm so all the informations from the from the potential block are for, are are put into the algorithm and uh, all this information together with a special number nonce number that it has to be larger than some target that's that's the basic of algorithm okay there is much more detail into it but they are looking for this nonce number Okay, this, this nonce number has to be larger than the target, and there is no better way to find this nonce number than just uh, basically just run the algor algorithm and always try to increment the number. So basically, nonce, nonce, nonce plus one, and comparing the target. If it's bigger than the target, then you can add a blo block into the blockchain. If you are first, you can add it there. Okay, and then basically this is running in the while loop. While loop, and you are incrementing nonce. If the nonce is bigger than the target, then the miner can add this inf the add this block into the blockchain. Okay, and every blockchain is unique. It's the unique information because it is a different transaction always, and also inf some in other information from the block are are computed into the hash and the hash plus this nonce and also other information. If they are bigger than the target, then this can be added into the blockchain. I will not go into make bigger, much bigger details here into this because that's really out of the scope of this course, but that's just the basics of uh, what you should know. Uh, the blocks have a nonce, and if the nonce is found and it's bigger than the target, then the block is uh, considered to be found and you can uh, and you can uh, add it to the, to the block. Basically this work here, what you see here, here to find the nonce is called proof of work. Proof of work. POV, proof of work, you will heard about a lot. Proof of work, this means the miner has to do some work, he has to run some algorithm, has to use his computational power of his computer to spend some money to mine to mine the block. And as the reward the miner will get from the from the network, he will get some Ethereum, uh, some Ether. Some Ether as the as the as the reward. Okay, so is a proof of all proof of work algorithm. So miner has to do some job, so some work in order to add a new blocks of the transactions into the blockchain, and each block is pointing to the previous, to the previous one. Okay, so now let's take a look uh, what algorithms they are running these miners. This algorithm is called ETH hash. ETH hash Ethereum. Okay. Uh, you can you can get here the entire algorithm how this is computed. You can see why I didn't want to talk here about this in the details because it's it's quite complicated. You can imagine this would be for entire one course uh, b just by itself. Uh, what we will take a look here is the minor part, this the mining part of the algorithm here, and you can see here basically what the miners are looking for is this nonce. This nonce basically they're looking for a random number from interval of zero to two uh, on the power of sixty four. And they're in the while loop. They are 
they are putting it with the other informations about the block with the uh, data set and the header and the nonce and it has, has to be bigger than the target. If it's not, just simply increment nonce plus one and run this algorithm again uh, until you will find the correct number which will be larger than the target. If you have a fa if you have a nonce, then you can add the block into into blockchain. So, yeah, that's basically it. So random integer from zero to two on the power sixty four, and um, yeah, then then so just increment by one. And here is a module operator, so you are running it. Um, it will not go over a limit, basically. Okay, I can show you an example of it. So we have a basic idea. Uh, you can consider this lecture done already. It's just a bonus, bonus information. So if you want, you can skip to the next lecture. Okay, so let me find this here. So basically what we are looking for, if it will allow me to write, write because it's still loading. Okay, let me see. Okay, so here I have some space. So let's say we are looking for a nonce number. A nonce can be from integer of zero, not to two on the power of 64, that would be too big. Let's say two of power of three. So we are basically looking for integer two to eight uh, for a nonce. For us, we will choose the randomly uh, nonce from this interval, right? So let's say we will start with the number uh, uh, six. We'll find the six and we'll verify if it's bigger than some uh, target. Okay, that does that target is not a very it's not uh, important right now. I just want to just show you incrementation of part of part. Let's say the six is not bigger than the target. So what we'll do, we will run it through the six. We will add six plus one. I'll use here a module operator, and we'll get here module operator was saying uh, on the two on the power of sixty four. In this case, the maximum here is two on the power of three. So module of two on the power of three, which is uh, which is eight. Okay, so six, uh, six plus uh, one is seven, modulo eight is uh, seven. Okay, so that means that the nonce will be seven. Okay, I'll run into the algorithm again. So now the nonce is seven, so we'll go to the next step. So now seven is bigger than the target. Again, seven plus one, modulo eight. Okay, and the uh, modulo is just a, a reminder after division, okay? So seven divided by eight, uh, it's uh, basically it's basically seven because eight doesn't fit into the seven, so you will get this reminder of seven. But here, seven plus one is eight. This eight modulo eight, eight, eight divided by eight is zero. So your new nonce is uh, zero. Okay, so the new nonce is zero. So you, again, you are going to while loop, and you now have a zero is bigger than the target, and you are basically starting over. So now zero plus one modulo eight is equal one. So your new nonce is uh, one. So now we're starting with the one. So e one is bigger than the target. Okay. So now you uh, now you understand this modulo operator, right? So we have we have chosen randomly six from this interval. So we have started with the six. Then thanks to the module, uh, to f then we are incrementing here to a seven. And now thanks to the module, we are not go we are not going into eight. Okay, but we are going straight to the zero. And then we are setting over one, two, and so on. Okay, so since the interval is zero to the eight, and if we would not if we would wouldn't have this module operator, we would basically we'll be incrementing and we would go over uh, above the about the limit. We would do we would go if eventually without this module to eight. Then we would go to we will go to eight. Then we would go to the nine, ten, and so on. That that's outside of the interval of the numbers. So, of course, uh, then we would provide provide the wrong values. But guys, you don't need to understand these details. It, that's really not necessary. But I just want to show you how that this is not something really magical. But that's a real, a real algorithm here that's running that's uh, looking for this nonce number and feeding it into the some other code. Okay, so uh, that's the at hash algorithm and uh, what else here i will see the other details no what from here what is important is the hash parent hash and this is nonce number uh by the way this nonce number is eight byte number so uh, this means a, a 30 uh, 32 uh, 64 bit so there's eight bytes if you will copy it and you will and you will paste it here you will see this is the eight byte number 16 selected, so this means eight eight bytes a number. 
Okay, so I, I can write here some comments for you so you have information about the block, uh, block, uh, block info. Okay, let's write here nance. Uh, nance. Let's write here a hash that when combined uh, with the min hash uh, proves that proves that the new line okay, proves that the block uh, went or, or block has gone through proof of work POV. Okay, so that's uh, basically this nonce non number, and the nonce number has uh, eight uh, bytes, which is equal to 64 bits number. That's what that's the number you could see two on the power of 64. That's this number. Okay, so not hash the, uh, hash, or you can just basically say the number that then combined with the min hash proves that the block has gone through the proof of uh, proof of work. And as you can see here in these informations, a nonce and the min hash is zero because we don't basically need to do any proof of work. We are just running simulation on our private network, on our private, private computer. So we don't need to do here any work here. We just automatically consider a block to be a block to be valid. And of course, that's not how does it work on the real network. There are the real miners that uh, they are running the algorithm and they are competing with each other to find the block uh, faster. Okay, about these other informations, uh, we'll be talking about them later. But that that this these details, guys, are more for the separate cores. I will see how much details we'll be talking about. I would like to focus uh, in, the f in the further lecture, in the future lectures, more on the programming side, and I would like to create some cool applications. But yeah, we still need to explain some details, so don't worry about that. That's gonna be it, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.